Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can install any regular M.2 SATA drive into any Apple MacBook Air or MacBook Pro Retina. By doing this, you can gain storage capacity in your MacBook without having to pay the extra cost of getting a compatible solid state. I have chosen to use a Samsung 850 EVO for this project. Because Apple uses a special connector for their solid state drives, you will need an inexpensive adapter to make this project work. I will have a link in the description on where to buy it. Once you have the adapter and the solid state drive you plan on using, you are ready to begin the installation. The first thing we will do is get the solid state adapter ready by unscrewing the only screw on it. Next, we will install the solid state drive into the adapter. Then secure the solid state into the adapter by reinserting the screw. Once you have the solid state drive installed into the adapter, it will look like this. Now it's time to open up the MacBook. Start by flipping it over onto a soft surface, that way it doesn't get scratched. To get into the MacBook, we are going to need a special screwdriver designed by Apple. I will put a link on where to get this. Unscrew each of the screws around the bottom plate of the MacBook. The two screws towards the back center of the MacBook are longer than the rest of the screws, so it's a good idea to keep track of which screws go where. Once all the screws are out, we can pop the back plate off the computer. Inside the MacBook, there is only one screw we need to remove to get the solid state out. To do this, we will need a Torx 5 screwdriver. Remove the screw located here. And then slowly remove the solid state drive, lifting it at a slight angle. Here is a close-up of what the old solid state looks like. And here is the new drive compared to the old one. Push the new solid state drive into the slot at a slight angle. Once it's in all the way, you can let it drop. Next, secure the solid state by putting the Torx 5 screw back in its place. Now we can put the back plate back onto the MacBook and screw all the screws back into place. Now that our new solid state drive is installed, it's time to boot off of an OS X install USB so that we can reinstall the system. Before we actually boot off the USB drive, it's a good idea to reset the computer's NVRAM. To do this, we hold Command, Option, P, and R as soon as you hit the power button. Wait for it to chime, and then restart, and once it chimes again, you can let go. Once the NVRAM is reset, start the computer up and hold Option, and then select the OS X install USB. The NVRAM is something that the Mac uses to keep track of startup disk selection, as well as things like the volume settings and screen resolution settings. So by resetting it, the Mac's no longer going to look for the old solid state drive. Now that the OS X install USB has finished booting up, I am going to show you how to set up the solid state drive so that it's ready to install OS X onto. Click onto Disk Utility and hit Continue. When that loads, you should now see your new solid state drive on the left sidebar under internal. Click on that and you will see the full name of your solid state drive as well as its capacity as well as a few other details. Click erase and then give the drive a name. You can name your partition anything you like. I'm going to be calling it Macintosh SSD. Make sure that the format of the drive is going to be OS X Extended Journaled and the scheme of the drive will be GUID Partition Map, then click Erase. Once it's done formatting, you can now close Disk Utility. 
Now we click Install OS X and click Continue. From here, it's just the regular way to install OS X. Follow through and then select your solid state and then click Install. It will take about 20 minutes to half an hour to do the entire OS X install. I will speed up the video so you don't have to watch my computer do the whole thing. Once it's done installing, give it your basic info such as your network password and your username and you're good to go. Now that OS X is installed on the computer, we are going to do one last thing. That will be to enable trim. By going into system information under about this Mac, we can see that the new solid state drive is fully recognized and functioning perfectly. However, by default, Apple does not enable trim on third party drives. But even though Apple doesn't enable it by default, they still actually have a terminal command that allows you to enable it on any solid state drive. Open up terminal and type in sudo space trim force space enable with a capital E. Hit return and then type in your password and then hit return again. When it asks you if you are sure you want to proceed, hit Y and then hit return. It's then going to tell you that it needs to reboot as soon as the operation completes. Hit Y and then hit return again. When it finishes rebooting, the terminal window will open back up, but you can close it right after. Now, when we go back into System Report under About This Mac, when we go over to the SATA section, we will now see that Trim is now enabled. The last thing I am going to do in this video is do a quick comparison of the speed performance between the new and the old solid state. I will be using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test to do the benchmarking. So that is the speed of my new solid state that replaced the old one. Uh, I don't have a video capture of the old original solid state drive being tested, but I do have a screenshot, so I will put that up now. So as you can see, the new Samsung solid state is actually quite a bit faster, especially in the right speeds. Um, being that the read speeds are only a little bit faster, I don't notice really any improvements on the overall speed of the computer, but it was a very fast computer to begin with. Boot speeds seem to be pretty much the same, however I now have 500 gigs instead of 128, which is the main thing that I was going for. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.